What will your family and friends say about you when you're gone? What will your kids think about you? And how will your life impact future generations? These are things we're going to unpack in today's episode here on the Husband Coach's Corner. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Husband's Coach's Corner, the podcast that teaches husbands how to love their wife every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris Scott, a.k.a. The Husband Coach. So welcome back. I know I've been gone for a little while, been uh, working on some projects and, you know, I hope to get back into the groove of production of these uh, podcasts. But, you know, life happens and I do have a job outside of this. So uh, I want to say thank you to all of the listeners and supporters of this podcast and of this channel, either on YouTube or whatever uh, listening platform that you happen to be on. So thank you for that. Now, as you already heard, today we're going to be getting into some uh, questions. And these questions are really centered around your legacy. What are you going to leave behind? Now, I don't mean to be morbid, but we are all going to die at some point. And when you're on your deathbed, you're going to be asking these questions and, you know, or at least I hope that you reflect on some of these questions. Now, if this is something you're already doing and uh, you have a plan, then I think today maybe you'll just uh, be inspired to go a little bit deeper into what it is that your your plan is. Um, and if you're not doing this, then my goal is uh, to at least inspire you to consider this If you haven't already, check the description box below. There's a link to sign up for my email list. For doing that, you're going to get a free copy of the Wife Journal, uh, but also be in contact with me about some other things. And then also uh, in the description box below is a link to the website that I just launched. It's called marriagedrills.com. This is going to be a good place for you. I'm going to get a blog out on there. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different things. So check that place out. All right. Now let's go ahead and dive into the content. So the first question, what will your family say about you when you're gone? This is something that's extremely important. And I don't think enough men think about this. I think we often take this question for granted, right? We take it for granted because it's like, Hey, I'm the man of the house. You ought to respect me. And we don't actually pay attention to what are we doing that will change the hearts, minds uh, and, and the behaviors of our family. So what will your family say about you when you're gone? I want you to take a second and, and just kind of think about that. What do you think your kids are going to say? What do you think your parents are going to say? What about your wife? What about your coworkers, your friends? What are all of these people going to say about you when you are no longer around to speak for yourself? Now, the question that you, you know, after you've thought about that, the question that you really should ask is what do you want them to say? Do you want them to say that you're a great husband, a great father, a great friend, great employee? What is it that you want them to say? This is your legacy. So when someone writes your obituary, and I know that it seems a little weird to think about writing your own obituary, uh, and you know if you have the uh, if you have the maturity and, and the capability of doing it, I recommend you sit down and just try to write your own obituary. And what would you say about yourself? And then assess what you wrote there and say, okay, well, hmm, is this stuff actually? what people would perceive of me. Because if they don't, then guess what? When you're gone, that stuff won't end up in your obituary. But more importantly, that won't be the things that people remember you for. So it's important to know what will your family say about you when you're gone. Now, there's a saying that when a person's on their deathbed, they never ask for more stuff right? They never ask for more stuff. Instead, they ask for more time to improve the relationships that they were in. So that's what we're going to unpack right now. Do you take your relationships for granted? And don't just gloss over this question, right? Don't say, nope, absolutely don't. 
because I guarantee you there is some aspect of the relationships we have in our lives, uh, especially with our wife. Um, we, we do take some aspects of that relationship for granted, and it's important to cherish as much time and create memories that are going to impact the what will your family say about you question, but also build that relationship. Because when you're on your deathbed and you're looking for more time to spend in relationships and you know that you don't have it, there starts to be these regrets. So, you know, kind of fast forward to that moment and say, OK, if I'm here, did I do everything that I could to build my relationships uh, in a positive way? And will I will I want to have to spend more time? to build these relationships or did I build them well enough that at this point, the only thing that I can do to better the relationship is to depart. And yes, there will come a time when the best opportunity or the best way of building that relationship is to exit the relationship. Now we won't get too much deeper into that, but you can unpack that on your own time. So you should really take some time to think about uh, this question and write it down and all of the relationships that you need to invest in. It really will matter. I know for me, it's definitely my wife. I have a lot of investing to do uh, in my wife. And if you haven't already checked out the episode about why it's important to invest in your wife, I recommend you go search that out on the channel or on the uh, Spotify account, wherever you're listening to this and listen to that episode because there's a lot of good information there. Uh, I got my kids. My kids are going to have kids, so I need to make sure that I invest in them as much as possible. And then I have two older sisters. I love them and I need to invest in my relationship with them. I need to get to know them more. I need to let them know that they're their younger brother, right? I'm the baby of the family, but that their younger brother is still here and he cares and he loves for them. Our father passed away recently. Uh, I think you guys, I, I mentioned that before. And now I have stepped into a role of just being a male figure for my sisters, even though they're much older than me. Uh, it's still a level of responsibility for me to step up and let them know that I'm here and I love them and, you know, they, they have someone. So find those relationships that you really need to invest in because that's what's going to define you in your last moments. And also when you're gone of what people are going to say about you, right? So uh, nonetheless, even if you feel like you just don't have anything to do in every relationship, you can find room to improve at least a little bit. All right. So take that into consideration. Now, there is a challenge with this particular question, and it's you won't know if you made it until the day that you've entered into, you know, your final hours, your final months, whatever it may be. You won't know if you invested enough until your opportunity to invest in these people, in these relationships is taken away or severely crippled. But when that does happen, you have to ask yourself, did I invest enough? And that's why I'm saying fast forward and start to uh, backwards plan. You know, I, I've talked about this in the past. Uh, begin with the end in mind or plan with the end in mind. What is the end state? That's what this question is all about. Uh, now, if you're a husband that has a lot of work to do, I want to encourage you that this is not a I'm going to fix it overnight and I'm just going to invest every single thing into my marriage. And you just like run off and you start doing every single thing that you possibly can. Uh, that sounds like it is the right answer. But unfortunately, you're going to get burned out or burnt out. And you're not going to want to invest in your wife the way that she deserves to be. And you're going to kind of do it lackadaisically after a while. Um, and then you're going to end up into this mundane routine that doesn't really help your marriage. So my encouragement to you is to take it step by step. 
Develop a good plan, right? doesn't matter if the plan works perfectly. You develop a good plan, you start to implement the plan, and then you assess if the plan is going to work. I've talked about this uh, a few times as well in former episodes. So take some time to really unpack what it is that uh, you need to do in this circumstance and uh, don't jump into it uh, super fast, right? Do small things and then build upon them. And this is the reason why the tagline of this entire show is love your wife every day. Finding ways to love our wife every day. All right. Because at the bare minimum, (laughs) at the bare minimum, my goal uh, for my marriage and for my wife is that she says when I'm gone that I loved her every day. And there was something that I did that she felt the love from me, regardless of how big or how small it is. All right. And my, my prayer and my hope for all of you listening is that that is the same goal that you have in mind for your marriage. Now let's go into the next question, which is, uh, what will your kids think about you? And I don't know about you, but my kids, they, they really mean a lot to me. And it's important to take some time as a husband, uh, but also as a father. I completely understand that there are some families out there that are blended and you may have kids with another woman that's not your wife. And you guys have a very challenging and messy relationship. Let me encourage you that now is the time to start finding ways of engaging to be present for your kids. It is so important to be present in your child's life because as a father, as a father, we have a genuine, genuine responsibility to raising the kids. Our culture, at least in America, likes to make it out to be that the moms are the primary caregivers and things of that sort. And I don't disagree, but God designed kids to come about between a man and a woman, which means there's two people that are responsible for raising the children. And that is just logical, common sense. And you can observe that no matter where you go, you can observe that a mother and a father are necessary for a kid to be conceived And that means a mother and father are also necessary for a kid to be raised and a kid to be nurtured uh, and a kid to be uh, trained up in the way that they should go. So don't be a father, you know, regardless of the challenges that it may present, your children are worth it. Now, coming back from, you know, my little soapbox episode there, uh, I do understand that there are challenges I really do. And my prayer for anyone who's going through, you know, a separated or a blended family where that's an issue uh, is that you, you find a way to work it out for the kids. Now, for those of you who have kids in the home and you, you're not experiencing the blended family uh, challenge, the same charge goes to you. I charge every man that as a husband and a father that is listening to this episode, I charge you to be present in the lives of your children. Whatever that looks like, you should your, your child should know that's my dad, right? Um, I'm not bragging that I have this figured out perfectly. But what my kids know is that their father is genuine and that he's there for them. Regardless of if that makes me look silly and I have to have a tea party or if I have to have a serious conversation and tell my kids the truth about what's going on uh, or something that they've done. They know that their father is genuine and that he cares. I'm not making up some gimmick. I play games with my kids. I, I read books with my kids. I go on sporting events or, you know, when my kids were doing sports. I used to go and I would sit in the stands and it didn't matter if they were good or not. Right. It was them knowing that they have a father who supports them, even though 
I have a lot of stuff on my plate. I have a job. And I know that many of you are going to say, well, Chris, that sounds good, but I, I have to work. And my job requires me to work long, strenuous hours. Uh, let me tell you, I'm there. I know the whole reason I, I haven't been producing lately is because of my job in long, strenuous hours. So stop making excuses. You know, if if there is one thing that I can do as a coach is be real with you is you got to stop making excuses. Yes, you have an obligation and, and a responsibility at work. And if it's your responsibility, you should own up to it. But at the same time, find ways of being more efficient at work so you can be present with your kids. That whatever that looks like for you, if that means you have to spend a night working late so that you can get off early the next day and do something important with your kid, then maybe that's what you need to do. Uh, whatever. Talk to your boss. And, you know, I'll, I'll be real with you. Maybe. And I'm not I'm not promoting anyone to. Uh, go in and quit your job. So, you know, don't don't write me and be like, Chris, I quit my job because that's what I got out of what you were saying. That's not what I'm telling you. But maybe if the job that you're doing is really hindering your ability to be a father and a husband and it's impacting your legacy. It's probably time to find a new career path or at least a new job. Just an opinion. All right. Take that for what it's worth run with it, uh, chew on it. I don't know, but maybe for someone listening, that's what you needed to hear. I, I know that there are some hard decisions that are being made in the world right now. And, uh, it, it's not always easy, but based off of where you are geographically or physically, whatever, I guess those are the same thing, but you get what I'm saying. You may have to make a decision that is going to benefit your kids so that when you are on your deathbed, your kids, they know that you are a father who put them first and that you love them. And it's not always easy, especially if it challenges the lifestyle that you're living. So take that run with it. The last question we're going to talk about is how will your life impact future generations? Now, I've already unpacked a lot of information about uh, the being present for your kids. And if you're not present, you're going to impact the future generation. All right. The future is going to come regardless of if you like it or not. Time just continues in the same direction and it continues at the same rate. The problem is most of us don't plan for the future as well as we probably should. So then the future sneaks up on us. And when the future sneaks up on us, then we start to react and it causes some issues and it doesn't have to. Instead, what you can do, you know, if you're really planning out your future, uh, you can pay attention to what you're doing today and ask yourself a very simple question. I got this from John Maxwell. What am I doing today that is going to make me better tomorrow? Now, my t my twist to this particular question is, what am I doing today that my kids will thank me for tomorrow? Let that sink in. What are you doing today that your kids will thank you for tomorrow? There's a lot of things that my kids are learning that I, I hold them accountable for, right? Uh, doing chores. And when they don't do chores, they get extra chores. And when they don't do the extra chores, then they lose opportunities to go do other things. They're not thanking me for that today. <laughs> if I were able to bring my oldest daughter in here and you can interview her, she would tell you that she is not thankful for the discipline that I give her in some regards. All right. Not today. But there was an instance where my daughter Something happened and I won't tell you what, but something happened and she came to me and she was like, dad, this is what's going on. We talked about it and she had the maturity 
to make a decision that she thanked me for the ability that she was able to really uh, figure that out, reconcile, and then make a, a decision. And that's all because I was present with her many, many years ago. And to, at the moment that she needed her father so she can confide in, I was still present. But she heard and she learned the things that I taught her over the years because of my presence, which impacted her making a decision that could have altered her future. See, what are you doing today that your kids are going to thank you for tomorrow? It matters. It really matters. And, you know, this goes so much deeper into what it means to be a caring, loving husband, because Especially if, if, you know, the kids that you have are in with, with your wife and you guys are married, like it's so important that you are present with the kids because that is your legacy. That is your generation and, and that is your future. So pay attention to that. Now, here's a uh, quick little drill that I think you guys can do. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to write out good and bad things that you do. All right. Here's a, an example, and this is not the end all be all, but here's an example. Play with my kids daily, probably on the good side. Embrace my wife with love daily. Definitely on the good side. Working long hours. I put this on the bad side. And then spend a lot of time watching sports. You can change this to whatever. Spend a lot of time doing something that's not with the family. Now, if your family is into watching sports and that's how you guys spend family time or quality time and, and that counts as quality time, then absolutely that's on the good side. But whatever you're doing that takes away time from the family, time from investing in them, uh, that's on the bad side. There is no gray area here. OK, it's either good or it's bad. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who are hesitant to put a bunch of stuff on the bad side uh, that really should be there. So you will just omit it and move on to a completely different topic. And for you guys, if I were like looking over your shoulder or if I could like read your mind, I would tell you that you're cheating yourself. And you're not going to yield good results when you cheat yourself. All right. If you if you're going to put the work in, you got to be honest. And sometimes honesty is very brutal. And it's even harder when you have to be honest with yourself. That is one of the you. You are the hardest person to be honest with yourself, but you already know the answer and you already know the truth. But you feel overly convicted to write it down because when you write it down, then it becomes really true and it may not be what you're hoping for. So I have to encourage you to write down the truth, write down what is really going on. All right. Now, this is not a, a, a drill to beat yourself up, right? This is a drill to identify the areas where you can be more present so you're impacting your future. Now, what is the objective stance to determine if something is good or bad? It's very simple. It goes on the good side if whatever the thing is that you're doing impacts the future of your children in a positive way. And it goes on the bad side if whatever the thing that you're doing impacts your children's future in a negative way. And I think you know what a positive and a negative outcome of your children's future is. Uh, and, you know, this this drill, you have to be real with yourself. All right. There's no way of doing this drill in a good way uh, in, in, you know, at least a productive way if you're not real with yourself. So try that out. Don't beat yourself up too much if you have an entire list of bad things, because your your real task at the end of this is to take that list and circle one thing that's bad and say, how can I find a way 
to love my wife and my children today. Don't do that thing. Maybe do that thing a little less. I don't know. Whatever it is, that's your plan to develop and and that's for you to act out uh, and to make sure that it is reciprocated and, uh, you know, your your family, it resonates with them. That's that's your role. That's your job. Not mine. Unfortunately, I can't help you with that. Uh, I'll be more than happy to be a sounding board. So if you want to send me a note via email, uh, check the description box below. And I'll be more than happy to respond and and talk to you and give you some advice. But ultimately, it comes down to you making a decision on what you're going to do so that way you can actually act that out. You you guys heard from me today and I, I have a series of notes right here in front of me. But instead of going over all of my notes, I kind of just spoke from my heart. All right. And if there is anyone who. You know, you walked away from this episode and you're like, man, Chris, you really offended me. That wasn't my intention. All right. I'm sorry if you took offense to this. But the truth is, if you took offense, it's probably because you are an offender of one of these areas. And I say that with love. You know, I am a marriage coach. I am a husband coach. And sometimes your coach isn't always going to be the the person who brings you the best news, right? Sometimes the coach is going to bring you something that's going to make you have to work for it. And if you haven't caught my episode, how bad do you want it? This is a time for you to take that gut check and say, okay, how bad do I want it? This isn't being a husband and being a father. It's not for the the weak man. All right. That's not, that's not what this is for. You got to be a real man to, to step into these roles. And I'm, I'm going to charge you and I'm going to challenge you. You're going to be stretched when you come to these episodes. That's my goal. And it's not my goal to just make you uncomfortable for the sake of making you uncomfortable. It's my goal to get you out of your comfort zone. So that way you can see how to achieve greater things in your marriage. My mentors, they pull me out of my comfort zone all the time. And I thank them for it because if I lived in my comfort zone, then I would never progress. And if I did progress, it would be very minor. All right. So just take that to heart. I'm here to help you grow. I'm here to help you become a better husband and also a better father. Just uh, in general, a much more present man and a genuine man. This isn't some Jedi mind trick games or anything crazy like that. This is like, this is some real man stuff. All right. And it's time to grow up and be a man. If that's what you are seeking to be and you want to claim yourself to be, if you are doing childish things, then maybe it's time to let go of some of those childish things, Uh, or at least reprioritize and shift your perspective to being a, a genuine man. A man that can stand the test of time. All right. So that is the sake of this particular podcast. Now, here's the deal. You can check the description box below. I do have some social media uh, connections down there. Follow me on Twitter. Send me a message. Hit me on the at all that good stuff. All right. Uh, But also you can send me an email at Chris at marriage drills dot com. Or uh, you can send me an email uh, at the husband coach email uh, down in the description box. Either one is fine. Uh, But more importantly, what I want you to do is go get familiar with marriagedrills.com. All right. Marriagedrills.com. I'm going to be putting some more information, blogs, videos, stuff like that on the site. And I want this to be a a good resource that uh, you can use as a husband to grow. My, my, my true goal and mission is to help men learn to love their wives every day and, you know, become better men in the process, right? That used to be the end of the tagline. And then I just stopped with learn to love your wife every day, uh, because I think that is the, the first and foremost important thing 
And then you become a better man in the process when you learn to love your wife because you start to realize that your actions actually do play a part in the way that your wife sees you. And in and it also plays a part in the way that you see your wife. So uh, ultimately, that turns into you becoming a better man in the process. That It, it all kind of ties together. It all works together. So what I'm trying to do with MarriageDrills.com is one, uh, give you tools that you can use to help strengthen your own marriage, but also give you some resources uh, where you as a man can learn to be a stronger man uh, and you can connect with other men who are looking to mentor and, and help you out. So that's something that uh, will come to the website hopefully in the next uh, couple months, but don't hold me to that because uh, I am still working on the website, but there's definitely going to be a blog with some uh, great resources and hopefully some good articles that I write uh, to help supplement the podcast and the video podcast over on YouTube. So hopefully you guys found this uh, this episode helpful. If you did, Wherever you are, rate, comment, subscribe, whatever the platform allows for, it just helps get this in the hands of other men. If you are, if you know a group of men or if you know a small group where you're hanging out with men and you think that this would be value added content, please share it with them. Uh, the, the goal here is to help as many men as possible that are in this rut or, you know, feeling hopeless in their marriage because they don't know where they're going or, or how to make it next. Um, and then last but not least, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling or coaching, I should say, uh, hit me up at my email, all right? We can set up a one-on-one -on -one session uh, and I would be more than happy to walk through some things and just hear your hear what your circumstances are and give you some uh, some advice and some drills that are specific to your circumstance. Uh, so just hit me up, Chris at marriage drills.com and we'll go from there. We'll figure it out. All right. So until next time, I want you guys to find a way to love your wife every day and become a better man in the process. Peace.